Hello and welcome to Friday. In case you haven't heard, which I'm, I'm gonna guess that you probably have, we went to Japan and it was a lot of freaking fun. And now we are back. We were there for like seven or eight days. And uh, now that we've come back, we're going to be doing a Japan Reflections video because we always do a Reflections video whenever we take a trip. So we're gonna be talking about our experiences in Japan, um, maybe some of the things that were not adequately shown or expressed in video form on the vlog and um, also use it as like a haul video and show you some of the stuff we got. Some of the stuff. Some of the stuff. Well, all of the stuff, just we just we didn't buy a whole lot. Yeah. Um, in fact, I would say that out of everyone that went on the trip, we probably bought the least. Yeah. <laughs> um, which seems odd, but I don't know, it's just we, we bought what we were interested in and we, we packed lightly and everything worked out. So um, to quickly back up, uh, if, if you were not aware of why we went on the trip, uh, we have friends um, that work at Fangamer, which is a video game merchandise company uh, based out of Tucson. Uh, it all got started from Starman.net, which is a Earthbound website, um, which is where I met Mal. Um, so that website turned into Fangamer, and uh, we have known the people from Starman slash Fangamer for years. They were going to Japan, because they go to Japan pretty much annually for business, and they were like, hey, we're going to go for leisure this time, why don't you guys come with us? So we said, okay, and uh, honestly, everything was so cheap that we couldn't turn it down. Well, it was supposed to be later this year. Yeah, it was supposed to be in like October. And then we got a phone call that was like, hey, everything is currently really cheap. We're going in May. So We're sorry, but we're going. So we looked it up and it was also super cheap for us. So we decided, yes, we absolutely have to go. So that's how we ended up going to Japan in the first place. Um, we also, we were with uh, two Professional translators, yeah. um, Lindsay and Zan, and that was so helpful. Like, there's so many things that I feel like we got to experience that would have just been lost on us. Also, like history stuff too, like history and um, I don't know, just just kind of day-to-day -day stuff that they were able to tell us about, like Japanese culture that we would have had to like study up on or learn from somewhere else. So, like that said, I think you could get by without knowing very much Japanese. Yeah, that's something that that's something I'll probably will probably continue to stress throughout this video is that you can visit Japan and you'll be okay. Um, I perfect example of that. I was one of the people on the trip that really didn't know a lick of Japanese. I, there was quite a few people that were fairly studied. Yeah. They could read katakana, they could maybe understand a little bit, maybe speak a little bit. Um, I knew nothing. I was the token gaijin, which I learned, you by the way. Learn. I did I did learn a word. Um, like, I, I knew nothing. I couldn't speak it. I couldn't understand it. I couldn't read it. I couldn't do anything. And it was just really not a problem. Um, no one understands English. Like, no one, like, understands or speaks English. Like, that's just, like, from my personal experiences being there, um, that was not common. Like, it was very rare to run into a Japanese person that understood what you were saying or could communicate with you in, in any way other than maybe, like, simple English words related to their job, yeah. you know? Um, but it's, it's, it wasn't necessary. Like, it's, it's amazing, it wasn't necessary. I know there's a few parts in the vlog where we show ordering from a menu with pictures, but that's very common in Japan. There's a, they have a lot of picture menus. They have a lot of, um, they really like doing the food sculpture things. Yeah. Where like, they have the like, fake the food. The fake food out front. There is fake food everywhere to show you exactly like what it is you're gonna be getting. So it's really easy, like if you're going to a restaurant, you just point. Um, now, if you have food allergies or something, I guess that could be yeah. kind of bad. Mal I has... mean, I kind of got lucky because I had asked Lindsay mm -hmm. and Zan actually, and I said, I have a peanut allergy. I said, now, I won't die. I said, but it will make me quite sick. And they both said, you know, they don't really use peanuts in Japan. Yeah. Not, not many things. So they said, you really don't have to worry too much, but I'm sure if you had something a lot more severe than I do, yeah, you'd it have would to be, be a concern. Um, one of the things that, whenever we, um, whenever we were talking to people, they were saying, you know, well, Japan, I wouldn't like Japan because like, you, it's nothing but fish. You know, you, you don't eat fish. And like, that's so far from the truth, it's crazy. I, I mean, think we had beef more often than we had fish. Possibly, yeah. Like, beef is beef is a big thing there. Um, they, you know, they have chicken, they have pork. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously there's a lot of fish, but like, if you're going to a place like Tokyo, 
Tokyo is like one of the biggest cities in the world. In fact, I think it is. I think it's the biggest city in the world, metropolitan area or something. But like, it's it's huge. They have everything, literally everything. Um, so beef is a big thing. Noodles are a big thing. Like you, if there's a lot of people that I know personally that don't like seafood, that's okay. That's okay. You can go and you will be fine. And there's a mentality in Japan. I know we didn't talk about this really in the vlogs, but there's this mentality of uh, politeness, whether it's like some kind of culture, cultural or societal thing where the Japanese are just going to be super polite. Like, I don't know if they actually secretly hate their guts or whatever, but like, if we're frustrating them, like, they don't show it. Um, because sometimes there would be times where it was a little difficult to communicate, but like, they will go out of their way to help you. Like, it's... Any, any like rumors or anything that you've heard of that, like it's absolutely true. That stereotype is absolutely true. They're, it's probably one of the most polite cultures I've ever seen. And um, that's what makes it so great for tourism and for visiting is because even if you don't speak anything, even if you're just trying to get by, like people will help you. And it's, it's not, I hate to be like, it's not like America where everyone's like, screw off. But like, if you went to like a big city, like for, I feel like for the, you could find someone to help you. I feel like for the most people, for the most part, people would be like, you know, screw off. And in Japan, like everyone's like, oh, I, I, let me try and help you. Like we were in a train station, mm -hmm. and Zan's Steven. Yeah. Like we were just waiting for someone because they had to put more money on their card, and he's looking up at the signs, and he's fluent too, mm -hmm. right? I think so. Yeah. And um, a local came up, and they were like, do you need help? He's like, yeah. no, I speak Japanese just fine. Yeah. And he was like, are you sure? And he was trying to make sure like he was okay and knew where he was going. Yeah, there's um, it's it's really cool because it it is such a societal cultural thing. Like it goes back forever, and like it's not like oh some people are like that. It's like everyone is like that, and um, it's really neat. But it, like I said, it's it that makes it great for visiting because you don't have to worry about like. Oh, I'm gonna get lost, or I'm not gonna be able to, to to speak, or I'm not gonna be able to do this or that. Like people will help you. Um, but even that said, like there was very few times I felt like we even needed assistance yeah. for anything. So um, overall, it was it was good. Um, gotcha pond are everywhere. I mean, the little capsule machines; uh, those things are everywhere. The uh, vending machines. I don't know if I adequately showed off how many vending machines there were in Tokyo, but like. I don't know if there's a point, seriously, I'm being honest about this, I don't think there's a point in Tokyo where you can stand where you can spin it with 360 degrees and not see a vending machine. Like, Some of them need to even wonder, like, does anyone even know this is here? Does it get stocked? It is, it's fully stocked. Yeah, the, uh, the day that we went and visited uh, Lindsay's host parents and there was a shrine that we visited, that we were walking out to the shrine and there was an abandoned like gas station or convenience store or something. It was long abandoned. But there were three vending machines out in front and they were lit up and they were fully stocked. People got drinks. And Mal's the one that, that noticed that and was like, who stocks this? Who Who is the one coming out here in the middle of nowhere and stocking this thing? But it is, it, there's, there's vending machines everywhere. Most of them are for cold drinks. Um, sometimes you'll find stuff for hot drinks. Um, there was an alcohol one we saw. There was an alcohol one where you actually had to put in your ID, which was interesting. Um, there's, uh, I there were some snack ones, but uh, drinks are far more common. Yeah. Um, and there's a, and this is my impression of it, that Japan is a incredibly consumerist culture. Like spend all your money. Like I, that's the impression that I get from being there because. Um, the gachapon are everywhere and they want you to put like all of your money in the in the capsule machines Drinks are everywhere and I really got into the swing of that just like f two or three days in because I'm the person that Drink, drink Like growing up me and my, my, my family kind of I don't want to be like my family raised me not to buy any drinks But like they kind of did like it was one of those things like in the line at check in the in the checkout line at Walmart or whatever Don't get in your drinker stack. Just wait till you get home. So I had that mentality growing up but in Japan, like everyone's carrying a drink, and why not? Because there's drink machines everywhere. So early on, I got into that, like, oh, I think I have a drink. And the coffees are like this big, so it's like four ounces of coffee. So like I would get a coffee, and then get off of the next train, and be like, oh, I need more coffee, because I'm used to having American coffee. Um, so the, the problem is, it plays with your mind because of coins, because we come from the states where all of the coin value is under a dollar. 
in Japan, all the coins are under $10, under 1,000 yen. So it plays with your head because you're like, I'm just putting some coins in a machine. Yeah, well, it's like $1.50, you know, and it, you don't think about it. But the only bills that we ever had was like, you know, 1,000 yen, which is 10 bucks. And we had a few of those, or we had, I think at one point, we, we started the trip with like a 10,000 yen. Yeah. Um, but like you, you wind up with so much coins. There was one point where we had all these coins in my purse. My purse was so heavy. And we started to look at them because it's like- I counted them out. Well, it, it's one of those things like, oh, you know, we you know, we have some coins or whatever. And in the States, it would be nothing. Well, we started to count it out. And how much money was it? It was like almost- 50, Yeah. 30 or 50, something like that. Yeah, like 30 something dollars. In coins. In coins. And we were like, oh God, you know, because we would spend the bills or whatever and put the coins away. And the coins, the coins honestly, and I don't know if the Japanese view them like this, but this is how I started to feel about them. Coins were for drinks. <laughs> they were drink tokens. So like you would you would buy something with the bills and you get all these coins back. You'd be like, oh, all right, I got all these drink tokens. So then you know, you'd go from like you're on the train and you're like, oh man, I got all these drink tokens. I might as well use them. And then you know suddenly we look at them. We're like, oh wait, we should consider this real money because we have like forty something dollars in coins. Uh, then things changed a, a little bit. Um, but Japan was Japan was awesome. People want to know about the stuff we bought and. Um, like I said, we bought less than everyone else for sure. Um, I bought a shirt. I got this at the Pokemon Center in Tokyo. I'm just kind of get up to show you. It's a Sprite Eevee, and it has a little message here. It says, "A rare Pokemon that adapts to harsh environments by taking on different evolutionary forms." Yeah. So that's the shirt I got, and it fits pretty tightly. It's a large, but their sizing is a little different. Mal got a shirt also. Ah. You can see that. <laughs> It's not working. You have to get up higher. Sorry. Too short for this. There you go. It's um, Mount Fuji, and there's a little moon up here, and it was just really pretty, and I liked it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, stuff we got while we were at the Pokemon Center, we bought um, some socks. We have, uh, I say we, but Mal. I bought socks. Mal bought socks. Uh, we got Mew and Lapras. Um, and then Mal also got some Sanrio socks. Gudetama socks. Gudetama. Um, San Rio is the same company that makes Hello Kitty. They also have this little egg guy. He's the best. I don't understand. He's the best. At all. Oh, I got a luggage tag with him on it too. Yeah, he's not on gonna, our luggage. We needed a new luggage tag and uh, ours broke while we were there. Um, and then otherwise, obviously, Mal got the Techo, which we talked about and showed in the vlog. And I've been using it. Um, and Mal's been using it and drawing in it. So, like, this is the page for Winter Sumo, and I had a picture printed this morning and put it in. And I talked about the day, and over here, um, I talked about our last day, and I drew a picture of the airport. So Mal's been kind of working through that, which is really, really cool. And um, I mean, it's neat. And I think the, the the thing that means the most is that she got it like at the actual store. Yeah. Like, I don't like know. At the, the Tobichi store. Yeah, at the actual Tobichi store, and that's I mean that's really cool. Um, otherwise, you got. Uh, a magnet on the way, on the airport. Out of the airport. Because we, we have fridge magnets. People send us fridge magnets all the time, and also this one is all really cool. All the pins cool. we get, we turn into magnets, too. We have a ton of them. And there's a so. little salmon nigiri. And then last, but certainly not least, uh, Mother 2. Uh, we showed that we got that at the uh, uh, Man Man Mandarake. Man Mandarake store. Uh, and this was 1900 yen. And for figuring out yen prices, the easiest thing to do is to just move the decimal two spots. So 1,900 yen is about $19. So, another two for $19. Earthbound cart, like 200. Uh, just in general, um, the prices on video games in Japan are just so wildly different than they are here. I know um, I, I took some shots of some games there um, to show some of the price differences. I know I, I snapped like a shot of Majora's Mask, and Majora's Mask was maybe maybe like. 1300 yen, so like 13 bucks. Majora's Mask here is like a 50, 60 dollar cart. Um, Banjo Kazooie there was like six dollars. Banjo Kazooie here is like, you know, maybe 30, eh, probably about 30, 35 dollar cart. Um, so it's, I mean, it's a huge difference. And obviously, Mother 2 is probably the most extreme example because, like I said, 19 dollars versus you know, 200. Uh, and we actually already had a copy of Mother 2, but we have a sealed copy that I got many, many years ago, fortunately, on eBay for cheap. Uh, so I thought it'd be cool to have like an actual loose cart that we can play. We actually don't have a Super Famicom to Super Nintendo adapter, but they're easy to get a hold of, so we can pick one up. Um, but yeah, it was uh, 
it was interesting to see, for me, the culture of anime and, and manga and stuff, because, like, before we went to Japan, there was a lot of times you, you look online and it feels, it feels like that is something that the, the culture embraces. Like, they embrace, you know, anime and, and manga and stuff like that. But then, part of me, maybe I'm just skeptic at heart, but like, I was like, no, they're pro it's probably, they're, they're focusing on that specific thing. That's not how it actually is. But, when we went, I realized it actually was. I mean, it, it, at least Tokyo. Yeah. At least Tokyo. Like, they use anime and, and animated characters and cutesy stuff, like, for everything. Like, to advertise all of their stuff. Like, it's not unusual to see anime characters or video game characters, like, advertising ridiculous bullcrap. And it was very weird. In, in one of the early vlogs, I think I, I got a video of it, um, it's Animal Crossing. Uh, it was, we were riding on the train and there was an Animal Crossing video ad, so like, uh, Toto KK was like playing his guitar and Isabel walks up and is like talking. And it's talking about a melon that is in season in Japan. Like, it's nothing to do with Animal Crossing. They're just doing a PSA on the train for like, there's this melon in season in Japan, you should buy it, it's delicious. It's like, why? Like, it's just... I didn't know that's what it was. Did you hear that from, like, Lindsay? Yeah, I'm pretty sure okay. Lindsay's once said that. So, like, the thing that's interesting is that in the States, like, that doesn't fly. Like, we have... Sure, we have advertisements for video games, right? Like, that happens. But there's not a whole lot of crossover for that. It was more like, in the 90s. Well, actually, you know what? Some There's some of that coming back now. I don't know if people have seen them. Ford. Ford Motor Company? has been doing yeah. ads with video games, and they're amazing. Like, they've been doing some Metal Gear Solid ads, and they're great. Ford also did uh, Dragon Ball Z ads. That's what I was thinking of. So, like, Ford gets it, and they're, they're kind of doing some, some crazy stuff, but, like, that's super common in Japan. And even, like, a random company will just have, like, a cutesy little avatar person just to, like, represent their company. So like, the Sumo Association cutesy thing. Yeah, and it's just really wild because that's so different from here. Like, and I, I, mean, I feel like in, in the States, animation is still viewed as kind of like a kid's thing. Um, and there's a, it's a big generational thing too. I feel like our generation growing up now is like, yeah, it's an adult thing. Like there is adult animation. There's Rick and Morty and whatever it is, you know, all the different shows, Family Guy, America Dad, whatever. But like, I feel like, like at least like my parents and some of the older people in, in the States, like they still don't get it. Like, they have a very, like, it's Looney Tunes. Like, no, it's gonna be for kids. And in Japan, it's it seems very different. It seems like animation is just accepted as a, a legitimate, you know, format, a legitimate medium. And even if people don't watch it, I feel like they appreciate it as something that Japan made. It's like, yes, you know, we made a thing. Um, th that's the impression I get. Anyway, um, got off on a little tangent there, but um, yeah, Japan, Japan was awesome. And I think the, the biggest thing for us is that you know, we were talking about it while we were on the trip. Um, first off, we did so much, it felt like we were there for a month. Um, seriously. Like, like if we were so busy. It was, but it was good. Um, but we've been a lot of places. In Japan, I think, is the first place that I legitimately want to go back to. Um, Ireland was great. It was beautiful. Food was great. Very stereotypical. Like, everything that you think of when you think of Ireland, absolutely true. And it looks just like that, but it's beautiful. Greece amazing history, one of the most interesting countries on earth, like bar none. Um, such interesting history and culture, like, I love it. But both of those places I don't want to go back to. I feel like once we saw it, we experienced it. Yeah. Um, and Japan I, is completely different. And a lot of it, I think, has to do with um, growing up playing video games and, and being exposed to that culture and knowing that all of the cool stuff came from Japan. It was a really interesting experience to actually go there and see all of that firsthand. And it's really, it's, it's overwhelming um, to actually be there and see it all in person and realize that, you know, forever, for however much of like stuff you thought was in Japan, like, oh, I bet there's some obscure video game stuff or obscure, you know, anime stuff or whatever. I promise you it's the tip of the iceberg. Like seriously, it, it, there's so much stuff. Um, so if you are a video game fan, or an anime fan, or a manga fan, um, and that's your thing, 
um, you you really need to make sure that Japan is on your bucket list. Um, go, absolutely go. And I mean, we you know we got tickets cheap, um, and it was one of those things that tickets should normally cost like twice that much. Twice that much, at least. It should cost like round trip like twelve to eighteen hundred dollars, and we got tickets for six hundred. So that's insane. That's really cheap. Um, so my advice would be, if you're legitimately interested in going, like just keep keep an eye on it. Like make one of those price alerts, and um, you know just keep looking because it you know we didn't expect to go that cheap, but we did, and it was awesome. So yeah, I'd highly recommend it. I would not sleep in the same place though. Yes, I would not choose that same hotel again. The if if we went back, I would sleep in a real bed. The tatami mat was a unique experience. It was it was nice being able to say that we did it, but it was uh, it was extremely painful. Um, By the end, no matter how you laid, like on my side, I would have pain just touching my hip to the floor. Yeah, like I I couldn't lay on my side. I mean, I'm I'm pretty bony, but like. Even looking past that, I feel like everyone was like in, in legit pain. Like you could only not be in pain if you laid on like your back or your stomach. Fortunately, I'm a stomach sleeper, so I was actually pretty okay. See, if I lay on either back or stomach, I hurt in a normal bed. So it was really tough. <laughs> I um, I would lay on my stomach and then occasionally I'll like turn on my side in my sleep. And uh, if I did that in Japan, I would wake up. <laughs> I would turn and be like, oh my god. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wouldn't and do we that. were told that was not normal. Like our futons were this thick. Yeah, apparently they are thicker normally, but still, those I mean, that was it was pretty bad. It's like a sleeping bag. But um, people I'm sure are gonna want to know what was the best part of the trip. My favorite day. I mean, I could probably answer that for yes. you. Yes. Uh, meeting meeting Sato Itoi uh, was. I hate to be like, what's the highlight of our life? Um, because like, <laughs> it's it's not. It's really not hero worship with him. I really, it's really not. Like, he is a very interesting man, and obviously, he created um, a game that brought us together, so I'm internally grateful for that. But it's not like, oh, you know, Itoi, it's. I mean, I still feel like the day would have been special if we didn't run into him. Like, yeah, I, I and still I think, think it would have been probably one of my most favorite days. Yeah, and I, I think that's the important thing to take away is that, like, just being able to explore Hobonichi was. So amazing, um, and I don't know if we adequately explained that, but Lindsay, uh, which is one of the translators that went with us, who works for Fan Gamer, and uh, she actually also, I think she still works for yes. Ho Hobonichi. She was responsible for taking the Techo and translating it into English. Basically, it was the whole story re regarding that is actually wild. She like decided to randomly email them out of the blue and was like, hey, I, I use the Techo and I really like it, and I was wondering if there's an English version. And then they were like, hey, why don't you do it? You know, because you, you know Japanese, you know? That's that's a very simplified version of the story. But she actually got to meet Itoi and become part of Hobonichi that way. Um, so she was able to give us this tour. So I know there's a few people in the comments like, oh man, I'm going to go take a tour. And it's like, well, actually you're not. Uh, they don't do public tours, it's just because we essentially knew someone who yeah. worked there. But it was, I mean, it was a super cool experience. The fact that they let us tour with all those people, the fact that they let us film it, the fact that they gave us so much free stuff. Yeah. They gave everyone a fan and popcorn and a bag, like all this stuff, and they sell this stuff, you know? It was, you know, it was pricey for them to supply all that for us, which was very, very nice and very kind. And then on top of that, for us to run into Itoi on the way out. And it was very, very, uh, I mean, odd that that even happened. Like, um, and it only really happened because Jeff Benson had his horrific Mr. Saturn there and was showing horrific. it to people. Like, because he he showed it to people and because it had you know we went around. Yeah, and we like, were actually supposed to leave before that, but then he pulled it out to show the lady, and, and she, she was, was like, "There's oh other God. people here who would appreciate this." We got. Can we go show it around? And he was like, "Yeah, okay." So that's what we did, and that stalled us for like 15 minutes. Um, which was fine because I got great footage of everyone like what it's so cool there like that entire Part is probably my favorite part of that vlog like I loved meeting Etoy, but like it was one of those things that it 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 uh, extends Trended. yeah, it transcends um, language barrier 
Like you don't have to understand what the people are saying to understand their emotions they're feeling. And it's such a weird experience to, to know, you know, our group has played Earthbound, they've played Mother 2, we've played the same game, they see the character, they recognize it, and like, I don't know, there's just a wild thing. It was very, it was a very surreal, very interesting experience to, to, cap, to capture that. And like I said, it does, it transcends like a cultural or a language barrier, so it was really neat. But then obviously also meeting Itoi was, um, was awesome. Yeah. 10 out of 10 would meet Itoi again. Uh, a lot of people in the group um, had actually met Itoi before because they had been to Japan before and had a chance to meet him. Um, but obviously it was our first time, it was a few other people in the group first time. Toby's first time, I think, to Japan. Um, so then also to meet I Itoi, Kevin, etc. Yeah, it was, uh, it was good. Then what? Then what was your next favorite? After Itoi? I don't know. Um, being able to get sushi so cheap uh, I don't know if I ever showed the bill, but the sushi was like, you know, 12 bucks, and we ate the equivalent of like 40 50 dollars, you know, for, for, us for the States, in and it was good sushi. Like, it wasn't crappy sushi. It was good. Um, otherwise, everything, uh, pretty much everything Going I ate was amazing. Going out to Lindsay's host family was really neat, because we spent time in Tokyo otherwise. Yeah, but it, To see the country, and to see... A different side of yeah. Japan. Yeah. It, and it... And that was really, that was really enjoyable. But I mean, really, in retrospect, everything was was absolutely amazing. Um, and we saw a lot. Yeah, we did. Oh my gosh. We saw a lot. But even with doing all of that stuff, we really, like, we could go back to Tokyo. We could go back to Tokyo and see completely different things and still spend an entire week, you know? Not to mention the other various cities and prefectures in, um, in Japan, so. I'd like to take a little tour around. Let's <laughs> not get ahead of ourselves. It'll probably be a while before we go back, but I, w I would like to go back. Me too. And uh, to, to close off this little reflections video, let me just say that, um, once again, reiterate what we said at the beginning, uh, you should go to Japan. I know that so many of the people that watch the vlog are huge video game people. They're huge video game fans, huge anime fans, huge manga fans. Um, you are already one with Japanese culture. Like, I, I, I already get that. Um, you should go. You should make that uh, a to-do list, a bucket list, whatever, and, and make sure you go. Do not be inhibited or scared by the language barrier. I promise it's not a problem. It seriously is not. Um, and the, the people, like, where you're going to be uh, the most, like, for, for restaurants and hotels and stuff, they know enough English to, to like, get you through whatever you need to do. Um, and you'll be fine and you'll have an amazing time and it will be I promise everything you expected and a lot more like it's it's it exceeded all of my expectations I mean I, I try to go places with no expectation but obviously you go to Japan like there's yeah. some level of like okay I've heard this and this and this and this um, and yeah it, it, it blew it out of the water it really did any closing remarks no. You're just glad you went? Yes. It was my bucket list, like top mm -hmm. top of the things I wanted to do in my life. What are you going to do now? Go back. <laughs> You're out of things to do. No, I want to go to France still. Yeah, we have to go to France. I actually went I went to France a long time ago, but we'll go back. We'll, we'll, we'll make it a trip. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions about Japan that maybe the vlogs or this video didn't answer, uh, ask them and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, or if someone else, if, if we have other commenters, I know we have people that watch that you know live and in, in work in Japan, uh, feel free to answer you know, on our behalf. If you have a question about our trip specifically, then obviously we'll do our best to answer as well. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And it wasn't that expensive either. I want to stress that point too. Like, not only the language barrier, but um, obviously we got our flights cheap, but like eating, I mean, there, you can ov obviously always pick restaurants that are pricey, but in general, I felt like it cost about the same or less than it was to eat in the States. Um, Japan doesn't tip, so you're already cutting like quite a bit of money off there. But even looking past that, like food just, just it's about the same or a little cheaper in, in my experience. Um, like I said, you, of course you can find more expensive restaurants, but it's it was not very expensive, um, seriously. You could eat at 7-Eleven for every meal and still be happy. Because <laughs> we did that 
for pretty much every breakfast. You could just, you know, my my one thing I would advise is, you know, be careful with those coins. Those vending machines will get you. You'll be like, oh man, I got some change, and you actually have like twenty dollars. So just be careful with that. Otherwise, you're good. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?